What standard do you use to classify a species as invasive? If the goal is to maintain the status quo of an ecosystem in all places on Earth, isn't that the death of evolution? So I would say that the second part of this question is a non sequitur, because uh, the, identifying a species as invasive is not the same as saying we need to keep things exactly as they are. Those are not, those are not the same thing at all. Um, <clears throat> there, the boundaries between them might be closer than you would think for some people's definitions or very much farther. Um, but specifically, I guess I would say one of, one of the things is that an invasive, I don't think of a species as invasive, uh, if it is contiguous with its originally identified range, if it is simply expanding its range, yeah. you know, climate change, anthropogenic or otherwise is allowing a lot of species to change first phenologies and then their actual ranges. That is to say first, you know, phenol like, you know, when it is that they set, you know, when it is they set flower or set seed rather. Um, and, you know, once that starts to happen, starts to change, then they can expand their range either north or south, depending. Uh, and that's not an invasive species. That's in a range expansion, which has effects, of course. And, uh, you know, I think um, species will go extinct as some species expand their ranges because they're just, you know, becoming better competitors at what used to be the edges of their ranges. Uh, but an invasive species is, in general, I, I, I shouldn't say in general, I think when I think of an invasive species, it's one that has been moved into a new place that is not contiguous with where it was originally. So I would say that the key, there are two key characteristics. Mm -hmm. One is competitively superior and two is moved by humans. So that is to say... So an introduced species um, will be moved by humans, but it may or may not be competitively superior, in which case it may just equilibrate or it may go extinct. Right, you, extinct. you can have... Um, whereas if it is moved by humans and, or by on the on the muddy feet of a duck, right? Yep. Um, and it uh, is competitively superior, uh, it can become invasive and not merely introduced. Yes, in fact, it almost certainly, pending some... It's a great risk when its population is near zero in the new habitat of going extinct, which mm -hmm. is hopefully what it does. Um, but uh, given a little bit of luck at the beginning, because it is competitively superior, uh, it will start driving out native species virtually anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the truly terrible environmental catastrophes of modern times is that human beings solve a dispersal problem for creatures that then mm -hmm. have competitive superiority for reasons that uh, I think I have some insight into. We do not yet well understand what, we collectively do not well understand what creates competitive superiority that allows for invasion. But um, effectively, you can transport things you can even transport things that grow where they're going that are still in no danger of becoming invasive, right? You mm -hmm. can transport an ornamental and grow it in your garden. It is the competitive superiority that makes them devastating because it means that you lose control of them and they take off. And it's very, very difficult, if not impossible in most cases, to put the toothpaste back in the tube, right? Mm -hmm. You just, you'd have to find, you know, every... The muscle back in the zebra. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. Um, yeah, that was a very hilariously ill-begotten metaphor, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the you know the uh, hydrilla that came out of the bilge water of uh, ships in the Panama Canal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess yeah. I think zebra mussels probably got into the Great, Great Lakes, Lakes the same as, by I, I, well, I guess maybe they were attached to the hulls of ships rather than bilge water. Yeah. Um, uh, the eucalyptus that is taking over California and, and the, the Andes. Andes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a disaster. And it's really, it's because people are not good at spotting which the native species are and which the invasives are, um, people do not realize how devastating this is right? yeah. and how no, diversity you, reducing it is. Yeah, you don't, you, you kind of need to have an, to have real familiarity with an ecosystem and or have an eye, like have a, a, an artist's eye. So in Portland, where the English ivy is out of control, it just, you know, hillsides look green. 
And that can look really beautiful until you have a botanist's eye and you see that what should be a mixture of sword ferns and vine maples and huckleberries, both deciduous and evergreen, and salal and Oregon grape and on and on and on and on is instead just ivy. So you've got a monocrop because you've got kind of introduced something that was introduced and is competitively superior and therefore is invasive. And um, I think you know, scotch broom is the same way. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's it's beautiful. It's yellow. It blooms yellow. It's like, it's pretty, but it takes over everything and then nothing else can can be there. None of the native species can be there, which then, of course, has effects on native pollinators, native seed dispersers, native frugivores, which then, of course, has effects on native carnivorans that would be eating the native uh, pollinators and seed dispersers and frugivores. And so, you know, you read trophic levels is an imprecise model, um, but it's but it's a it's an accurate concept with imprecise imprecision in it. And if especially if your invasive species is at the plant level and it starts wiping out other native plant species, you just got a cascading problem that is going to be very hard to uh, I don't know toothpaste back in the bottle or genie back in the tube. You put the genie back in the tube. Yeah, that's better than the <laughs> muscle zebra thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, and you know, it, it ain't just the plants, right? We, no, it's not. We have the wrong squirrels, right? Our wrong native squirrels. squirrels are being driven out by you got things the, you need to be an expert to spot the you difference. You've got the dumbest amphibians in the world taking over. Every place cane toads have been introduced. They are so dumb. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the Biden administration, but you're talking about cane toads. They're not toads. Uh, I thought you were describing them as dumb amphibians, but... I, th I think more highly of amphibians, I believe. <laughs> yeah, all right. So do I. Was it flatworms earlier you were It was flatworms. Yeah, sentient I was flatworms. Sent Vaguely oh. sentient flatworms. Yes, the brilliant flatworm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a low bar, <laughs> but they're flat, so. Yep, that, they can get under a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> flatworm limbo. Flatworm limbo. Oh, man, that sounds like a very difficult game to judge. Indeed. Usually limbo is self-judged, isn't it? Uh, it's sort of self-judging in the sense that when the bar comes crashing down, you didn't do it. Well, you can crash it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that too, I yeah. guess. Yeah.